good afternoon. Today I want to talk a little bit about emotional intelligence because it's something we all have heard a little bit about, especially as we're becoming more and more aware of just how important it is to overall development. EQ is something that a lot of people believe is a greater indicator of overall life success and fulfillment than even IQ. And that's, that's largely because it has everything to do with how we interact and relate to the world and people around us. It has everything to do with how we navigate through the ups and downs of life and ultimately how we build compassion and empathy. So if we haven't done work specifically on building our emotional intelligence, we're likely running off of the example and modeling that happened in our families of origin. Now some of you hear that and think, great, I had great examples. And parents who really were comfortable with emotion, expressed emotion, um, I felt comfortable expressing emotion. And for others, you're thinking, crap, <laughs> I have some unlearning to do. Um, I had a parent who had a temper, who went from zero to 60, or who stuffed emotions. So um, I want to talk about three components of emotional intelligence that allow you to just kind of check in and see where you're at, you're at right now. The first component of emotional intelligence is having a broad emotion vocabulary. Now the sad reality is that most adults use probably seven to eight emotion words to describe their emotional world. world. Words like tired, exhausted, stressed, overwhelmed, happy, sad, fine, is that eight maybe? <laughs> and the, the truth is that we have such a broad array of words that can describe our emotion world. And if we get better at building that vocabulary, what we do is become better emotional, emotional communicators. We're simply giving people much more information and giving them much more de detailed information about what we're feeling. The second component is how well you can tolerate difficult and uncomfortable emotion. So building a tolerance for holding space for, for the discomfort and for um, difficult emotions. This is so important because a lot of the work I do with couples is helping to build that ability to tolerate difficult emotion for a longer and sustained period of time while still engaging with constructive dialogue. What happens if we don't do that well is we either get to a point where we blow up or we shut down. So if we can build our capacity to tolerate and sit with the discomfort for longer, and not just for our emotion, but for the emotion of others, then what we're doing is building resilience. And I'm not asking you to be the recipient, recipient of somebody's projected emotion, but just can you hold space while somebody's experiencing difficult emotion? The third component is how many skills do you have for emotion regulation? So while we're working on building a tolerance for difficult emotion, we also want to be able to recognize when we've gotten to a place where we need a timeout, where we need some space to reground, regroup, to ground and to regroup, and to take care of ourselves so that we can come back in a more constructive and productive way. So emotion regulation skills are things that self-soothe, that help to reset, that help to ground, and that help to reframe. So examples of that would be um, listening to music that calms you down, um, essential oils to kind of help you um, feel comforted and soothed, uh, going for a quick walk around the, uh, around the neighborhood, um, doing something physical, for a period of time. Uh, grounding would be meditation, yoga, prayer. So all of these are examples of emotion regulation skills and we wanna build our toolkit of, of emotion regulation skills that we can turn to when we need them. So the three components that I just brought up are building an emotional vocabulary, tolerating difficult and uncomfortable emotion, and building upon our skills of emotion regulation. If you work on those three components, you are becoming more emotionally intelligent. One thing to consider for those of you who are parents, you are your kid's emotion coach. So no time like the present to work on these things now, right? 
My name is Marcella. I'm one of the senior therapists at Flourish Counseling and Coaching, and I thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.